go. Here we go. Getting spicy. Anybody home? Anybody home? Look for police! Anybody home? Wow. Anybody home? Jesus. You know, it was a fire, but it was also like an act of insane mother nature. On a day like that, there was nothing you could do to stop it. Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Just go back! Go back! Jack Palmer, P-O-M-M-E-R. I was on my way to the grocery store and I saw the smoke and uh, I just stopped to take some pictures of it. It was mostly just smoke when I got there. I thought it was just a little bit of a brush fire and that they would knock it out pretty quickly. In fact, that's kind of why I, I didn't go home and get a real camera because I figured by the time I got back, it'll be out. The wind was changing and at one moment, the whole fire scene would be covered with smoke and then it would sort of blow away, like reveal it. I was getting some stuff ready for New Year's and all that good stuff, right? I made my way to Costco that day. There was a noticeable fire going on. What a hell, oh, man. It didn't look super bad. It looked like it was a really small wildfire. But as I kind of drove a little bit more, the smoke started to intensify. Look, guys, it's insane. It's right there, look. There was a shed, but there was a fire and smoke behind it, but the wind was sort of blowing the fire the other direction. And then I noticed it started to smoke, and then it burst into flame. That's when it started to, to look like a big fire and not just a lot of smoke. Oh my gosh. Me and my fiance were at home kind of just chilling. We saw some smoke out in the out in the distance, and it's Colorado. It was warm. We're used to wildfires in general. Went from just the, the little wisp to getting a little bit bigger, getting a little bit bigger, and then all of a sudden you're just watching these clouds just form and change colors, you know. None of us knew how long we even had. It happened so fast, we just kind of had to make decisions and get out of here. Whatever was in our pockets or what we were wearing is what we got out of there with. And at that point, you know, both of us, we were like, oh, like, okay, something bad is, <laughs> is, is coming. Oh my God, bro. I've never been on, oh my God. Oh my God. I can't see shit. I can't see shit. It was something that I've never seen in my life before. When I turned the car back, that's when I started to get the fear of maybe we should just try to get out of here as quickly as possible. We're gonna get crashed on guys. God help us right now. God help us. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy Did you guys just see that? Go towards Denver! Back away now! Holy crap! Everybody back east! Go towards 36! Move now! Leave We live in Cold Creek Ranch South, and we were here just over 29 years in that house. We were the original owners. It's rainy ash, too. And I happened to look out the window and saw that the sky had changed colors. Pretty bad. 
I didn't see any houses burn. All I saw was a field on fire. Got a coat, got my purse, unplugged the crock pot so the house wouldn't burn down. That's how I always think when I leave, I don't like the crock pot plugged in. I got on Facebook and people were talking about the fire being behind Costco and Target. Evacuate Costco now at eastbound. Leave your cards, go. On December 30th, I woke up with sort of a strange feeling. I, I don't want to say I'm intuitive or anything, but it was just this weird feeling. It was so windy and smoky that people were completely disoriented and trying to find their vehicles and get out safely. Tons of people running out. S stuff was just flying everywhere. It was like a mini Armageddon in my Costco parking lot. Go, 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 go. start calling everybody, calling everybody. By the time we, I crossed over to Superior, it was black. And then I saw uh, one of the Boulder County uh, trucks that do the animal control. And I'm like, ah, oh, I go with these guys. And then I, I just followed them. And we went to the pet uh, daycare place. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. He's a good boy. Come here. Good boy. I'm gonna look inside and see if there's more. Some of the dogs were out and we were able to get all the dogs locally. Puppy! There's one more, there's one more. Come here. Take a good boy! Come here. There was a dog that escaped and we couldn't grab. And as they were about to roll, the dog, I saw the dog underneath the truck and like, stop, stop! It's underneath the car! Here, okay, okay, okay. There you go. I'm a combat veteran. I was in the army, and you know, I was in Iraq a couple tours. Actually, there was a moment that it felt like, like I was back in, in Iraq. There was a moment that I actually thought that the whole city was gonna burn. So my name is Maxwell Cook. I'm a PhD student uh, in the Department of Geography at University of Colorado Boulder and part of the Earth Lab. And we study wildfire impacts in the Western US and in the globe. What we do know is that this fire moved incredibly fast. And that was followed by one of the driest six month periods on record really set the stage for there to be a lot of these fine fuels that were really dried out by the time we had an ignition source. Look how fast it's burning. Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Just go back! That is exactly what we saw. And then sadly, one by one, like dominoes, the homes are igniting the next door homes and it spreads through the neighborhood. Command 2660. Go ahead. I have multiple houses involved up here on Hillside. I have uh, like four type one apparatus. We could use additional up here, otherwise we're gonna have a lot on fire here in a moment. The house was smelling smoky uh, no, nothing on the block was on fire yet. What do I know? I don't know anything about fires, but I figured I got like at least 10, 20 minutes, but I wasn't going to use all that. I stood by the window to look west, and all I saw was the billowing smoke coming in. But then what got me nervous was it was cold that day, but the heat was coming through the window, and I could feel my face uh, like hot, like I stuck my head in the oven. 
So that's when I said, okay, I gotta get out. I didn't even grab anything. And, you know, in retrospect, there was a handful of things I should have grabbed. <laughs> okay, we need law enforcement. I'll get him headed that way and see if we can get all those people in there. Come in, 2262. Larry, you're out of the airport. 28-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-1-6-0-
go ahead and take some photos and just start snapping. Left hand fire, Boulder Mountain, 2332, Allen Park, Hygiene, Lions, BCFDO. Yes, an AMR responded to North Bills Highway in Middle Fork Road. Six five eight, I North believe there's going to be three units road. total going to that. All five, units responding to the Middle Fork fire. We're receiving three, three, four, four, three to four foot flames. Ten to be twenty, 20 by twenty in area. Good to see you, man. You got me on arrival. This is going to be Middle Fork Command. One home threat, 150 yards from the flaming front. Eight foot flame length, uh, threatening power lines. You could hear it was a distressing situation for them. Fire was spreading fast and uh, winds were very high, extremely worrisome. So it was a day where any fire with high wind was going to be a big concern. 121 I'm just passing the fire. It is on the east side of the road. I'm heading to Station 1 for vehicles. Hey, what's the tag channel for this Middle Fork fire and uh, command name? Because it started earlier, we would have had so much more time to uh, develop into something larger than the Marshall Fire. Much larger. It was a lucky day, in a way, on the Middle Fork Fire. I didn't think our house was going to burn down because of the fire across the street. Then about 4.30, between 4.30 and 5, my husband called me and he says, our house is gone. Um, I'm seeing it burning on TV. I was numb. It was just so surreal that the whole neighborhood was gone. If this is happening in a place like Colorado in December, I can't imagine what's to come. When people look at Superior, what they need to understand is that this can now happen anywhere. Places where people live, high dense populations, and every community needs to be on high alert. A lot of these people had just bought their homes. And then you're hearing these stories of just everything going away and like all their dreams. And, and thank God very few lives were lost, but you know, even days after you can't forget about the fire because you, you can barely drive in Superior without smelling the fire. And there's this little weird part of your brain that even though you're looking at everything being burned, you still think that your house is going to be the one that survives, you know? Hey, Connor. Um, just want you to know that, you know, life is sometimes. Life can throw you some big hooks. And you have to just keep going and you have to keep going, and you have to keep going, and you just gotta keep fighting, and you never, ever stop. You never stop, you never stop, okay? I wanted him to know that, uh, I, I did what I could to try to save our house. And there's just some times when you can't. And, 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 and you, I just wanted him to know that there's a way to pick up the pieces maybe and figure it out and move on. And um, I don't know, it was a moment where I felt like I needed to, to say that. <laughs>
you know? Okay, there we go. Here we go. Getting spicy. As a community, we can learn from this, and I guess I'm grateful for having a chance to start over. From the destruction to the recovery, I'm Nelson Garcia. I'm Anjan McCall, and in the next half hour, we'll share with you the stories of three families who lost everything. And their process to rebuild their homes. I followed a family who lost multiple homes. I followed a family who moved to this country. And our colleague Katie Eastman followed a family who had just built their dream home. We begin with Katie, who had a baby this fall. So she'll start and I'll finish her story about the Farringtons. just getting comfortable with living in the uncertain forecast. Oh, in here, so this is um, the triage room. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, triage room. So Nick and Katie Farrington think back. about life in stages. The stage right now. Hey, sweet girl. Hi. How was your day? Good. Good. It's the one where they have great jobs and two kids, Harper and Emery. Hey, baby girl. How was your day? Good. In this phase of life, they also had their dream home in Boulder County. In 2020, they lived in an RV on Panorama Drive while they scraped the house that was here and built this. We weren't planning on going anywhere, and we'd even said, uh, like, we're never building a house again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were ready to, to be there till who knows when. <laughs> when came on December 30th, 2021. Yep, we walked up the hill right there. Yep, everything's gone. The Marshall Fire forced them back in time. It really was living in the newness of so much uncertainty and where are we going to live? You know, we're in our third place now and we've got a fourth place lined up for June. My room was that that metal pole to the um those things, right? The grief of what they lost came quickly. Tears for three days straight. Oh gosh. But nearly two months after the fire, Let's break. Nick and Katie are done crying. This is the set that my mom got us oh, that yeah. my wife hates. <laughs> the laughter comes easier as they work toward what's next. At least I don't have to take down Christmas lights this year. <laughs> Laughter, even as they look at the reality of being $800,000 underinsured. It was just a comfort level where we were at. And now I would say I'm, a, I'm scared to spend a dollar because I don't know how much you know, we're going to have to make up. Yeah, we did the deck. Yes, that was a paint. thing of beauty, by the way. That was, <laughs> did you still frame? Was it still framing too? Still yes. framing, nice. yeah, foot it's awesome. apart. Despite that financial hit, the Farringtons still plan to rebuild. There's a little bit of excitement that we can make some changes, but there's a little bit of 
sadness that we have to go through this again. <laughs> yeah. The builder, he understands. Were you guys at home when the fire yeah. started? Or, so you had to like watch it come in? I did not. Uh, yeah, we left with nothing. Josh Mitchell will not only rebuild Nick and Katie's house, but his own too. It's kind of therapeutic, I guess, in a sense. I mean, it's like, this is what I always do every day. So for me, it seems a little bit easier. Each step forward reveals more loss. Good luck with your build process. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's overwhelming knowing so many ended up in a stage of life they never anticipated. You know, how are you doing? She said she mixed because my house got burned down in the fire and then she could use help with rebuilding our house. But then she, <laughs> so we'll have to frame that. That was one. on her mind. <laughs> it's true. I, it's like cute and true and mixed emotions for sure. <laughs> but Nick and Katie find comfort going through a new chapter, knowing they're not alone. I hope you get another house even cooler. <laughs> so many people are motivated to just help the fire victims. Um, you want to say that? Uh, I hate that word. <laughs> oh, I don't like b being called a victim, but... I heard recently burnouts, or like the burnouts. <laughs> oh, the burnouts? Okay, maybe I could do better with that one. So today is day two of debris removal. Um, it's a big moment for us just to get the process going. You got twisted. There are obvious reasons to celebrate. It's coming. Come on. It's going. There you go. <laughs> and then there's the reason for this gathering. It's real glass. You can just throw it at the house <laughs> when you're done. Really? There's plenty of equipment to clean it out. I will find any excuse to have a happy hour. But uh, no, this one never crossed my mind to do it here, but why not? This happy hour might be unconventional. Here's to taking the first step to rebuilding. But Nick and Katie Farrington Cheers. need to celebrate after so much loss. So she grabbed our safe and um, some pictures, and that's it. When the Marshall Fire destroyed their home on Panorama Drive, it was hard to see this kind of hope. Good to see you. Good to see you. The beginning of debris removal is the first sign of what's to come. Up, 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 up. Uh, they always were the fanciest ones on the street. <laughs> they celebrate alongside neighbors who lost their homes too. So Dave, when are y'all getting started? And the few neighbors who didn't. How are you? Good. Good, good. I'm so happy for you guys. Oh, you know, it's. We're excited too. We're, we're just ready to get going. I'm ready for you guys to come back because it's lonely down there. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this road has emptied out, community stayed put. And so thanks for sharing it with us and I hope we get to be a part of all of yours too. So. And that's something to celebrate any day. Here's to celebrating every step of this journey. All right. Here, here. The girls have not wanted to come back out here until we have progress. When life is a climb. We know we're gonna love this home whenever it's ready. Nick Farrington believes that's when lessons are learned. Huge hole had to get dug. And now we've got concrete going in, foundation is going in. So actually they just finished today. While they were waiting for the foundation to finally go in, the family moved five times over the year, a climb not expected by Katie Farrington. No, I didn't think it would be that many times. It's funny, whenever he says five, I'm like, I guess it was five. Um, it just went by so fast. You never felt like you were in your place, you know, in your own place. Uh, you're always in somebody else's place. Now, their place is finally turning into reality, and they have moved to one final rental, they hope, until their so-called dream home is fully rebuilt. A long-term house has provided a lot of, um, yeah, just comfort and, like, yeah, just rest, not knowing that we don't have to get up and do it again next week. All right, so this is the front of the house. The garage is over there. Entrance will be right here. Now, their there. worries can focus on the physical progress. What I understand is once the concrete goes in, some of all the other trades can move a little bit quicker. Um, but this was the bottleneck for a lot of the construction. Now, their worries can focus. So all this will be back, backfilled after the concrete dries. On Nick, leaving the country for two months for work during a critical time for the rebuild. So I worry about that, but I'm gonna do my best to stay involved and, and she's smarter than I am. So she'll keep it going. The climb continues. He's here, he's just you know, 11 time zones away. And so does the learning for parents and kids. We hope this is a, just a lesson, a, a milestone, something in their life that they can look back and say, 
well, our, our house burned down and we were fine and we, like, we can get through anything. So I wasn't really expecting this thing gonna happen to my life. The measure of a man's worth should not be found in a pile of rubble. The measure for this man, those who don't know me, I'm Karma Sherpa, can be found in his homeland of Nepal. Every year before the pandemic, Karma Sherpa arranged to have doctors and dentists provide services that cannot be found in his impoverished village. He called them health camps. Yeah, mission accomplished. The sidewalk we get in the, the house here. He has a new mission. We're going to rebuild the house. We don't know how long it's going to take it. How long and how much. Love you, man. Like his friends and neighbors in the Sagamore neighborhood, Karma is worried about insurance. I hope that, you know, will be enough to rebuild. If the money is not enough, I don't know what to do. He's worried about the process. Without knowing much, it's very difficult to, to move forward. So, yeah, this is a learning period for me. But for all that is lost. You know, everything is gone, but this, the flower part is still there. He has a surviving symbol of growth, but more importantly. Sonam Sherpa, and then uh, Sonia, and then Dakuti. He has his family. Well, short. <laughs> <laughs> they have good karma. You see the lots of silver lining and lots of good part and good part of people and the people you know and you don't know them all coming together to help. A couple moving out of state saw on Facebook that these people who for years have given everything had to evacuate with nothing. A sweatshirt, shoes, my sister, my father, and my phone, and that's about it. So that couple gave the Sherpa family their home to stay for free. They had never met Sonia, Sonam, Karma, or Dafudi before. <laughs> we cried. <laughs> we cried. I don't know how long I would survived one room with my parents and my sister. All the people who are going through, like me, just stay positive and stay strong. Are you rebuilding or? We, we want to. Oh, good. You know, yeah, yeah. we want to. So Karma and Dafudi moved to Colorado more than 20 years ago, 13 years in this neighborhood. Amy's and Lisa's, I've talked with them. I have you now. Karma ran a mountaineering tour company out of his home, along with his aid efforts for Nepal. Please stay strong. But Karma says this is what makes a community. I love my neighbor. Uh, I love the area. This is why they have to come back. I cannot really escape from the problem. Yeah, thank you. Good yeah, to see you. yeah, take care. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take care. Yeah, thank you. Just patiently waiting for what's to come. Sometimes life has to go in stages. Yeah, I'll put it in my car. Especially after losing everything in the Marshall Fire. This house was a refuge, offered by total strangers who heard what happened to the family of Karma Sherpa. Yeah, it's very important because after the fire, you know, a lot of places, you know, it's very hard to find a rental place. The next stage is moving to a place where they can stay long. Uh, the next uh, stage, uh, before Dafuti Sherpa can go home. We really hope this is the last house before we move into our new house. Right now, you know, the lot, uh, debris removal is completed. The Sherpas and their two kids are preparing to live in this furnished rental for more than a year. And I hope it doesn't take too long to go uh, into the new house. Yeah, this is it. Sonam Sherpa likes the room. Uh, there is some apprehension on what's to come. But he's tired of the uncertainty, <laughs> tired of living his life in stages. I'm hopeful that, you know, this is just going to be like a final long, long stretch that no more issues or no more troubles ahead. He is thankful he doesn't have to share space with the younger Sonia. My sister would just decimate my own room <laughs> with <laughs> 
lots of toys, but now there's a separate room, so I hope a separate mess. At least there is one. The Sherpas had no possessions nearly six months ago. Not having much, uh, some situation makes it easier, <laughs> especially for moving. Karma says most of the things they do have now were donated, proving to him, with the community's help, they never had nothing. I don't feel at all that I don't have anything. I feel that we have everything, everything we need. They have a place to live, but it's still not home. I mean, your house is your house. We keep work uh, every day and then until we get there. You know, it's a, it's a long journey. Okay, cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> Even without his house. To keep things going, uh, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> Karma Sherpa still wants to be a good host. We just have a good time uh, and then good moment and then share something. <laughs> In the middle of the Marshall Fire Zone, he pours tea, a tradition from his home country, Nepal, with the hope that one day he can share it inside his rebuilt house in the Sagamore neighborhood. The physical structure is, needs to build up, but, but that, will, that will come long. But nearly a year later, his lot is still just a pile of dirt. While some neighboring homes already have construction well underway. I was hoping uh, to put the foundation by end of October. But an insurance shortfall of nearly $200,000 delayed the process, leaving his wife Dafuti and their kids wondering why not us. But it didn't happen and then it's, now it's really cold. Too cold to break ground without increasing costs. We need the money to build a house. Ten months after the fire, Building plans were finally made, and the Sherpa said they eventually reached an agreement with their insurance to cover the needed costs. So yeah, it took a little while, longer than we expected, and then finally they are doing the right thing, and I think. The right thing. This is a living room, this is a kitchen. To make them whole again. Now we have a more clear picture that we get to build the house. Just like their neighbors. A lot of houses popping up. That's a good thing. Just like the thousand others who lost their homes on December 30, 2021. The fire was <laughs> burning right here. One year later, Daffody doesn't think about the home that was destroyed. She thinks about something more important she lost three months after the fire. I lost my dad, so I think more about my anniversary of my dad. There are uh, some challenging day and then some tiring day, but then we just have to deal with that and keep moving forward. Forward with a dream that one year from now. Then this area is going to be the kitchen and dining room. They can serve tea at home. I hope so, but I don't know. And then there's always surprises come up. A toast to no more surprises. I hope that everybody's back in their own house by this time next year. Just so much family here, and, and we just want to rebuild and stay as one. Come in, come in. This wouldn't be their normal gathering space. I just told him I didn't want to be on film. Well, you're going to. <laughs> as you can see, we're a close tie. We're a close family. Well, she's my sister, but she acts like I'm her mother. <laughs> yeah, she's my best friend. The Chavez family knows what's more important than the location. Man, I t he looks just like Opie. Ted has taught his kids yeah. and their kids yeah. to love where they come from. Look at here. The baby of the family won't ever know what the five Chavez homes looked like in Old Town Superior before they burned. That's just amazing. It's all gone. All gone. Ted lost his home. So did his mom, Elsie. We've been here forever. So it's really hard to see this. And they lived on the same block with other relatives on what they called the Chavez compound with five family homes. Five generations. This is our fifth generation right here. These two are our fifth generation. We want, we want to leave it to them. 
Yes, we do. There's a lot to go through. This was the kitchen. Ted's kids want their dad to return. It's just mind-blowing. I know the kids want to say, well, do you want to move out? No, I'm not moving out. Maybe when I'm, when the good Lord calls for me, they can take me out. <laughs> but right now I'm staying. We'll get together and this is going to get stronger. We're going to be stronger. <laughs> Bless the cooks. Thank you all for homemade dinner tonight. Getting everybody together, homemade spaghetti and sauce and everything. Somebody needs a plate. This is my granddaughter, Samantha. She's the one that has that little monster little girl. <laughs> Everybody, I just want to say thank you for all coming for mom's birthday party. She's 77. Happy birthday, mom. And I really appreciate you all coming. I didn't expect this. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, it really, it's like a dream, you know, and uh, no, I, I, I just, I'm just thankful to the good Lord that we could do this today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. If it weren't for the fire, Elsie's birthday would normally be celebrated in Old Town Superior. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> With help, those without houses can feel at home. We just have to go on. It is tough. But just like four years ago, I lost my husband. We were like this. That was tough. So I just think that this is a new beginning. Maybe this is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Celebration is their way of moving forward to cherish <laughs> what really matters. You can go now. I love you. Thank you for everything. Yes, a lot of memories. But we'll create more. We'll create more. We just. Uh, we just gotta get back up on our feet, get this cleaned up. Man, we wanted the yard cleaned up, but we didn't expect this, huh? <laughs> this moment yeah. yep. is one step closer to living again in the place they call home. Yeah, I pretty much know this yard like the back of my hand. <laughs> Ted Chavez lived in Old Town Superior next to his mom, Elsie. Thinking of all the little things that my niece and nephews gave me, my kids gave me when they were little. We couldn't find anything, they're all gone. The Chavez family has lived on this corner for 70 years. Oh, they had to rip up yours and Terry's concrete job. <laughs> we worked hard on that too. <laughs> all those memories are buried in there. How many? All of them. They lost five houses to the Marshall Fire. Yeah, this is a good, a good mess. You know, it was time to get rid of all that stuff and quit seeing the memory there, you know. It just wants to make me cry. I'm looking forward to a new beginning and, uh, and just praying that everything works out for us so that we can come back home. I can't wait. It's hard, but it's getting done. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it. It's sad, huh? It's sad knowing that there's a lot of stuff like you should have been having in the sky. As much as Elsie wanted this day to come, yeah. it doesn't make this moment easier. I'm sorry, you're sad. I'll get over it, Ita. I, I get too sad too fast. So it's gonna be hard to see it go. Hard, yes. You know that, that this feels like, Mom? But necessary to move forward. Kind of like when you bury someone, it's the closure, you know, of burying some, something. It's been a long haul. Long haul, very long haul. So here's Carmen's Corner and that's Carmen's Corner. What the Chavez family sees is not what's here, but what can be imagined. And we're gonna have crawl space foundations, no basements. For so long, they've waited to visualize their dreams. Let me show you this as we're closer to this real quick. Ted knows what he sees. A home that I could call home again. <laughs> you want to take a look at the samples now? Your contractor, Mark Stringfellow, has options. Here are the carpet samples. Mm -hmm. Soon, the first of the modular homes will arrive with what they've chosen. The hardwood flooring samples, the laminate. Pick out the cabinets and also the bathroom vanities. I, I see a gorgeous, beautiful house sitting here and a lot of yard work that needs to be done, <laughs> which I'm not doing anything now. I used to say I hate doing yard work, but I actually miss it. So I'm going to give those to you. Okay. Finally, it's something that feels tangible. I'll tell you, there's time I want to give up, but 
I have family and my friends, and they're all praying for us, so got to keep them going. You know, they say, you got to keep going, you got to keep going, we got to have another party. All right, we're going to do that. <laughs> it's like having ants in your pants or antsy now, you know. <laughs> we want to get back. So, but like I said, thank God, we are yeah. going to get back. Hope for the future means more when you can see it. It's just uh, putting more spirit into our bodies, and we know we're going to get here. Yeah. These stories continue to be ongoing. And we plan on following them till the end when their homes are back here standing. And though these families lost everything, they still know it could have been so much worse. We close out tonight remembering the two people who died during the Marshall Fire, 91-year-old Nadine Turnbull and 69-year-old Robert Sharp. We offer our condolences to the families.